Go. Okay, today's lesson um, is going to be on where to find your information, um, on, where, on how to fill out your six key formulas at the bottoms of your worksheet, okay? On the orbital welding programs um, that we're gonna make from scratch. Um, everyone should have one in front of them, and they should also have, you should also have an informational sheet. Does everybody got that? Yes, we do. Okay, good, good. Okay, the, um, the uh, terminology that we're going to be using today uh, that's going to be required to know in, in the six key formulas is from the lessons that we, uh, uh, we've had previously. Uh, those being uh, what does rotor OD, what does arc gap mean, what does IPM mean, those, uh, those, those types of uh, things, okay, which we're going to find on this, on this worksheet. Um, the, uh, the, back in the day, we would fill these out um, these worksheets out, we would just have to memorize them or we would fill them out and write it down in layman's terms on the different formulas, the different percentages that we needed, um, all those types of things and fold those babies up and stick them in our pocket and then when we go on the job sites and well and have to take the test, we'd have to pull them out and use them and try to remember what those, uh, what those functions were. Here, uh, what we have today, the new technology and the new information that we have from over 15, 20 years of orbital welders uh, talking with each other, helping each other out, we've come up with these formulas and these percentages that we use uh, to build these uh, programs from scratch. Um, we've, 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 uh, we've developed them to a point where it's so much easier, faster, and accurate when you're filling out a program or making a program from scratch um, and then put it into the machine, it gives you so much more time on the back end when you're taking the second part of the test, which is the actual welding part. Um, it gets you closer when you make your very first weld to have an acceptable weld um, than having to make several moves uh, like we did back in the old day. Okay, so um, what I'd like to do is uh, go through some of the uh, questions that are on the uh, um, uh, key, uh, six key formulas down at the bottom of your worksheet and let's see where we can, uh, if you guys can pick up where, uh, where you're going to find that information. And I'll be going through it with you. Uh, for instance, on key formula number one, it asks for rotor OD. And we know that the rotor OD is pertaining to what type of information that we need? Something to do with the weld head, right? Yeah. All right, so if you, if, if you need some weld head information, you would go to your information chart and your information sheet and look on lines between 14 and 23 and you would find anything, any question to ask or that was questions to you about a weld head, that's where you'd find that information. If you were looking for arc gap, which is part of the key formula number one, you would know that that has to depend, that is pertaining to tungsten. And anything that you need or anything, any questions asked about tungsten, you will find between lines 27 and 31. Okay? Um, another bit of information that you're going to be uh, using this information sheet that you'll have to uh, find uh, out of the key formulas that are going to be asked is the IPM and that stands for inches per minute okay inches per minute is based off of what one of the three essential variables now I want you to write these down the three essential variables that you need to know when you before you start a weld program or start welding is and it's given to you you need to know what size tube you're going to be welding on the OD you need to know what the wall thickness of that tube is and you also need to know uh, what type of well head you're going to be using. Okay, so those are the three essential variables that needs to be given to you before you even start. Okay, so I want you guys to sound intelligent, and I want you guys to ask that question. You need to know those three essential variables before you get started. Okay, okay. so back up to IPM. If they were, uh, if you're looking for the number that you need for IPM, it's based off one of the essential variables, which is the tube OD. So right here it tells you from a quarter inch to one inch, you use the magic number five. Okay and anything higher than that, inch and a half through six inch, you're gonna use the number four. And again, those IPM numbers that you're gonna divide into the circumference, it's all based off of experience that we, have, that, we, that we have known and come to know that these numbers work the best for over, over the last 15 years, okay? So with that said, what I'd like to do um, is to ask uh, a couple of pertinent questions, specific questions to the class, and then I'm gonna call on you, and I, what I'd like you to do is tell me where you would find, what line you would find that information on, and then uh, what the answer is, okay? okay. So, uh, Henry, I'm gonna call on you. Let's, uh, if I wanted to know what the rotor diameter and, or the rotor OD is for a 9-1500 head, 
what would be the right answer? What is the rotor rotor uh, OD for that? Uh, it's on line 19, and it's 3.187 inches. Correct. Does everybody see that? Yes. yes. Okay, very good. Um, Johnny, uh, what is the arc gap? If I gave you one of the three essential variables, which is wall thickness, if I gave you uh, wall thickness of tubing for 0.035, what would be the arc gap, and what line would you find that on? Uh, line 20, and it would be 0 0.030 inches. Well, it's actually line Excuse 29, me. right? Yes. But the arc gap is what again? 0 0.030. Very good. Very good. That's good. Okay, well, it sounds like you guys are, uh, you know, know where to go find the information when it asks you uh, 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 a, a specific question in the, uh, in the programs, so in the six key formulas. Um, what, I, what I'd like to, to let you guys know is, 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 this, is, this, is this is very important, okay? So once you master these, these programs and how to fill them out quickly, and once we come back from break, we're going to fill out six from scratch, and you're going to find that um, as we motor through these, the first two we're going to work as a group. It's probably going to take us about an hour, hour and a half to work through a complete program. But towards the end, on the, on the last couple of programs, you're going to be getting these, nailing these down um, in, in less than 10 minutes. Okay? So which gives you more time to work on the back end of the, uh, of the testing, and that's the, the actual welding aspect of it. If you have any problems on it, you'll have more time to spend on those. And of course, this whole class is about Learning, learning how to manipulate the machine, how to build a program, how to pass a test, and to pass a test to get a certification so that you can go out and get a job and earn a paycheck for your family.